Hi there. Welcome back to the Rare Book Views channel. Today, I just got back from a book adventure. I went out of town with my book friend and we spent the night in a hotel because there was a huge book sale out of town and it was far enough out that we couldn't really drive uh, the same day. So we spent the night in a hotel and we had a ton of fun and we talked about books all night long. And then we got up very early. I look a little, I feel like I look a little fatigued. I got up at about 4.15 to go stand in line and the people watching was great. There was a news crew there. I think it must have been a slow news day to talk about the book sale, but it was fantastic. There were so many people in line. It was a huge place, just like my last book sale. It was in one of these, used to be a department store. So there was plenty of room for the tables. There were plenty of room for people. I thought it was pretty nice to have that much room to move around, but there were a lot of people. So it was hard to film any of it because the there was kind of crowds around the good tables. <laughs> I found some great things though. So let's go take a look at what was there. Okay, as you can see, this was a lot of books and the dealers were like locusts. So I'm, I'm not a dealer, I do sell some books, but mostly I'm a collector. And people in line recognize me, the other dealers, because we're always in line right before these things open. Uh, so at this sale, they had tables with just, you know, layers deep of books and tons of tables. This one, it was $3-ish for books or less. And then they also had specially priced books that went a little higher. I bought a lot of books. I bought a couple dozen books and I bought a few that are for presents so I can't show them to you, but I did find some cool things that I'm excited to tell you about. I got this Louise May Alcott. This is old, no, yes, old fashioned girl. Um, this is the original edition by Little and Brown, I think. Um, this is a re later printing. The original ones had gilt here where the title is as well on the spine, but they have a nice little embellishment and they are pretty early in the near turn of the century. They have these really cool frontis pieces and these are really sweet. So that I might wait until I have one of her more famous titles and paired up with that. I got a Rackham. I love Rackhams. I'll put a link in the notes to my video of a tour of the Rackham collection. It's very addictive. His illustrations are so cool. And I don't have an example of Cinderella. This is a later reprint, but Cinderella is a really hard one to get and I don't have anything on my shelf, so I'm excited to have that. I got a Winnie the Pooh. I can't pass them up. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, <laughs> I don't even need this one, I think. Maybe. It won't finish out all four of them, but it might be useful. This is pretty cool. This is a reprint of an Andrew Lang book. Um, Andrew Lang's Fairy Tales. Very early Scottish. He compiled fairy tales from around the world. A friend of mine introduced me to Andrew Lang. He put a request in. He said, uh, I look for books for some of my friends on request, and I have a list always when I go to these book sales. But this friend of mine said, rather than me bring him the books, and tell them how much they cost. And I charge my friends a dollar finder's fee because they get really heavy. Uh, he said he wanted to put me on retainer. So he gave me, I think $20 and said, just buy me the Andrew Lang books, um, which got me really interested in them. I actually have some. So I might do a tour of those later. This is a slightly later reprint, but it's still really nice. And um, I'll probably sell this on eBay to fund my addiction. Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer, uh, Collier. This is early, so that's cool, it's illustrated. I growl and Poe. I have 
I have bought and sold this many times. I own too many copies of Poe. I can't keep them, but I need to find it a new home. So this might go on eBay. I got, oh, I love Lewis Carroll so much. I've never seen this edition, but it is Tenniel Illustrations. Tenniel was the original illustrator. This is a reprint. So I don't need this for my collection. We'll see. I might hold it in my hand and see how that goes. This is a cool copy of Through the Looking Glass. I, I have a really great, I have more than one Through the Looking Glass, so I don't think I need to keep it, but um, look how pretty, and the embossing on the cover is so cool. So I think these will probably also end up in the to be sold pile, but I do have a bunch of Alice in Wonderlands, and I did a video tour of those, and I'll put a link in the description. This is really fun. I, this is the copy I have of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is Heritage Press. Heritage Press did some reprints. They have some really cool illustrators and usually a slipcase. This one did not come with a slipcase, but I know in a month people are really going to want to read this. And you should. It's so much fun to read this around Halloween. And it's hard to get a vintage nicely illustrated copy, so I know I can find a home for that. This I've never seen before. Swedish fairy tales. I think like Andrew Lang found all around the world people have their traditions and their fairy tales this one looks really neat and I, I looked it up to see how sellable it is and this is pretty desirable so I know this will be helpful in my quest to make this a zero sum game to not lose money on the book addiction this is fascinating I know about this book and I have no idea why this is a book written by a woman who claims that President Harding was her actual father and which may be true not judging I uh, haven't read it I but I can't remember why I've heard about this there was a reference somewhere if you know why I know about this book please tell me um, so she wrote this book to expose this scandal that President Harding was her father and the US government tried to block it from being published because it was so scandalous at the time and that did not work because it's America so this was published and it was considered you know like just shocking at the time this is a, I believe it is a first edition I saw some um, online that sold and the copyright matches and the different points match this I found on eBay listed for between 20 and 40 dollars and on non eBay sites for pretty high sums of money commanding quite a price and I have not seen any that have sold with the dust jacket this guy is the dust jacket but it is in pieces so I'm gonna try to put Humpty Dumpty back together and put it in an archival cover and see if I can piece it if there's enough of it to piece it back together and that might make it pretty desirable for people who collect biographies scandal or books about presidents so I'm hoping that will be cool and a fun project so I look out for that I could do a video and show how to put the dust jackets back together in a cover and I think that might actually be pretty fun. Okay, so those are my vintage guys. Those were in the special section. All of those were specially priced. These were in the children's section. I've talked about this before. Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators. This was a series when, kind of when I was a young reader, but I did not read them, so I don't usually keep them. I know they are really collectible. This is an interesting one because not in great shape. It looks like someone took a bite out of it. Uh, this is was in a library this is ex libris and it is the library binding there's a mark here this is the version that was sold to libraries they held up a little better but there was a publishing flaw where this cracks has been repaired this is later in the series and i'm sure there is a collector who's going to want this so i know i can find it a new home the box for children did you read this when you were a kid if you reread this as an adult you might be shocked as i was that these kids engage in some weird behavior. <laughs> it's strange that we encourage children to read this, but um, really awesome illustrations. This is pretty early. I think with the box, there's another version of the cover that has no train, just people. Um, this, I think, is the second U.S. edition, which is kind of cool. It does have... Somebody had a sticker nameplate in here that has been partially removed which is not great for condition uh, I'm gonna sell this because I have a copy and I have compared it and I think mine is in better condition so I'm keeping mine um, when I sell this for ethical reasons and just because I will take pictures of all of the condition issues and explain them and if you ever sell a book and you know that there's a problem like that you should do that too you should tell people because um, out of fairness but also if you sell a book to someone and they find that there's a flaw and this has happened to me if they find that it's not in the condition that you said it was they can return it to you 
if you sell things on eBay or anywhere else online, you want to avoid having that kind of interaction with people because it is the pits. So just a little free advice. If you know that there's an issue with a book and you're going to try to sell it on, definitely tell people what it is. Aesop's Fables, illustrated by my friend Arthur Beckham. I have a copy of this. I don't need a reader's copy, so this is going to get sold on. This is one of those reprints where instead of the illustrations throughout the text, they've made it a little more economical by putting all of the illustrations in the middle of the book. It's still a really nice copy, and I think Aesop's Fables are really fun to read, so I'm hoping that will help fuel my addiction. I bought one of these at the last book sale I went to so I can pair them up because it's part of a series. That's really cool. I saw this and I just had an inkling so I checked it out and this does um, bring some profits online so I'm going to look into selling this and I'm interested to see, sometimes it's fun to see what people collect and I know there are people who are interested in the ideas behind the occult but I have to tell you I flipped through this and one of the chapters is titled something about how you know magic the science of the future I feel like that day has arrived <laughs> the doubters of science maybe have read this book fascinating topic um, the quiet American by Graham Greene this is a first edition with no real dust jacket someone put a sort of plasticky acetate over it to keep it safe. I've never read this and I'm super excited to read it. This was very, um, this was a budget price. So I'm really excited to, I haven't read, I really like classics and I haven't put one on the reader shelf recently. So I'm excited to dig into that. Okay. Last but not least, Christine by Stephen King. I have only read one book by Stephen King and it was not his horror book. It was some, he did one sci-fi, mostly fantasy of the sci-fi part and I, the dragon's eye, I want to say, and I really enjoyed it, but I never read his scary books. I don't know why. And now I feel like I can't get into them. This, I believe I have looked it up. There are a couple of fan sites that list all of the publishing points for first editions. I believe this is the first edition. The dust jacket is a little, this is definitely been read and handled so I'm probably gonna put this in an archival cover as well but I can give you a couple examples the website I found that talks about how to figure out if it's a first edition the price up here the listed price matches which is handy um, the ISBN the book number here on the back looks the way that it should and this website described a lot of what is on the title page so if you're interested in how to figure out if you have a first edition or if you run across a first edition I will put a link to this cool website this is the copyright page and there's a block of text here that describes some things and then down here it says first printing but that doesn't always mean it's the actual first edition so this website tells you how to figure out the other clues in the book I'll put a link to that so that you can look at it. Uh, that was so much, I mean, I bought so many books. What a great day at the book sale. Good people watching, a lot of weirdness going on, plenty of room to stretch out, very enjoyable. I can't wait to see what happens with some of these books when I say sometimes when I list them on eBay and then see what happens, um, it's like bringing in the harvest. And then I'll be able to afford to buy some more books and have more adventures. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're interested in any of the books that I'm talking about today, let me know. We can dig in farther. I could show you my Arthur Lane collection. I might get around to doing that. So we can compare the one that I found today with some that I have on hand. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what kinds of videos you're interested in. And as always, happy reading.